Hello and welcome to the Today's Homeowner Weekly Podcast. We're here to help you with the challenges we all face as homeowners. I'm Danny Lifford. And I'm Joe Truini. And each week, Danny and I are here on the podcast to answer any and all home improvement questions. And we want to hear from you. Send us your questions or comments at todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Okay, Danny, let's get started. Today's Homeowner Podcast is brought to you by The Home Depot, How Doers Get More Done. This week, it seems like everybody is working on their decks to get it ready for summer. We've got some great tips to make it a little easier to get it clean and to make it last a long time. Also, if you're thinking of an above-ground swimming pool, a lot of people find that that's a great addition to their backyard. You need to make sure not only is the ground level, but it'll support all those thousands of pounds that come along with that much water. So we'll give some tips exactly what you need to do on that. Ductwork cleaning is it really necessary? You know, we've heard about this for years. A lot of opinions out there, a lot of controversy about it. We'll give you our opinion during this podcast. Joe, what simple solution have you selected for us? Well, for this week, I'm going to share a simple solution, how to make a homemade non-toxic mosquito repellent. More and more people, Danny, are spending time outdoors on the yard, on the deck, and you want to be bothered by mosquitoes. So um, I got a little tip on how to make a non-toxic repellent. Oh boy, that perfect timing on that. So, okay, let's get started. Tell you one thing is happening all across the country. People are getting their decks ready for a lot of fun. We're going to start, everybody can start getting back together very soon and we can start having those nice uh, barbecues and grilling out out back, but the deck has to look good. On the line right now is Preston with a deck question. Preston, welcome to the show. Danny, I've got a new 24 by 16 foot deck. It's a uh, treated six quarter, six inch pine with uh, the railing is also the six quarter boards uh-huh. with cap on top. Mm-hmm. My question is, I want to do the preservative. I'm thinking about using uh, a sealer uh-huh. and I would like some advice on which one to get. And can I do it with a spray, a guard spray guard? All righty. Well, um, how how old is the deck? How long has it been um, in it your yard? Was in July of this of this past year. Okay. Well, it's probably uh, etched well enough, and a, a lot of the pressure treatment has probably evaporated enough that it will accept a sealer like you're talking about. Um, yeah, most all of the sealers can be applied with a pump-up sprayer, but the real key thing there is to make sure that you use a brush to brush it in. You really want to force that um, sealer down into the pores of the wood. Uh, that's going to last longer. It's going to protect the wood longer, and... And I wouldn't go cheap on that sealer. I would buy a really good quality sealer. Um, Bear has a really good one from Home Depot. And also, um, a lot of people may not have heard of Flood brand, but Flood is also a really good sealer that has the UV protectors in there that will um, keep it from uh, fading and will really hold up very, very well. You just want to make sure that it is clean and it is nice and dry before you apply the sealer. Well, it, that that is the case, and that that's why I want to put it on there now because it is still clean, and I, I'm thinking about going something clear and not stain it. Is there a difference in whether? One old better than the other. No, not really. And I'm kind of along um, the same lines with you in terms of um, keeping it um, clear. I love the you know the look of wood. Um, Joe and I also, if you decide to add introduce a little bit of color to it, we would recommend a semi-transparent, and that way it still soaks into the pores of the wood, but you can still see the the color of it. But uh, once you put the clear sealer on it, you're pretty much um, going to be with that from now on and unless you wait many, many years for it to kind of uh, fade away. But um, I think you'll be in great shape. If it all looks good, just check it out. Make sure your screws and nails are in good shape. Sand any area that you might have some splinters here and there, and you'll be in great shape. I, I have one other question, Danny. You mentioned brush it after I spray it in. That's right. Uh-huh. Uh, are you t- 
talking about with a paintbrush? Yeah, uh-huh. just get you a big four-inch paintbrush. You know, um, an inexpensive one would work just fine. Um, and uh, then just just spray a few boards, and then just 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 lightly brush it. You're not having to do much to it. It's mostly just kind of even it out, and then do a few more boards like that, and it'll it'll roll along there pretty quickly. Uh, Joe, what do you think? Do you, you think on most sealers one coat is enough, or do you think Preston might want to go with a second coat? Yeah, Preston, read the label. Typically with a clear water preservative, they recommend two coats, but they need to be applied within a 24-hour period. So you'd want to, you know, do that. You want to get two coats down. Now, I'm not sure why you can't wait longer, but for, you know, unlike most finishes, but in any case, so do it within a 24-hour period. And another option is um, you can use a sprayer, you can use a pump-up sprayer, you can use a HVLP, which is a high volume, low pressure electric sprayer. But Wagner has a new deck staining tool that you might want to check out. It's called Renuvo. It's R-E-N-U-V-O. And it's a long handle. It looks almost like a, you know what those Swiffer mopper things look like for cleaning your yeah. floor? Look, looks like kind of like that. And has a reservoir. It's about $40. has a reservoir that holds um stain or sealers or whatever and you basically just walk along and it has a pad so it kind of scrubs it into the uh forces the sealer into it so it saves you from spraying and then brushing you probably do it all in one pass and it even has a narrow vertical line of bristles that go down between the board so it actually does the surface and the edges wow hmm. um so uh check that out because that might be an option as well recommended is that good or bad well a lot of a lot of opinions out there i i will have to tell you that i would not put it on 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 any of my deck um i think it's a uh, kind of watered down a little bit it's certainly very well known and very widely used but it won't hold up as well as some of the the other um uh, sealers that are out there uh, bear brand or flood company brand um they might be a tad more expensive but you certainly will get your money's worth out of it Hey, our, our, our pleasure, Preston. Get out there and get that deck ready for those big uh, gatherings you're going to have this summer. And we appreciate you appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you for coming today. Yep, thank you. I want to remind you about something that you need to do. You may not think about maintaining your basement door. Now, if you have a basement, you know that that uh, really has to stand up to a lot of weathering and so forth. And like any other part of your home, a basement door needs some maintenance from time to time to make sure it continues to do its job uh, really well for a long time. The first thing to inspect each spring and fall is the finish of the door. If the paint is scratched or chipped in any way, you should touch up those areas as soon as possible because exposed metal areas will begin to rust and that'll certainly shorten the life of the door. A new coat of paint may be necessary for the entire door every few years. Next, you'll want to check the area under the door for moisture. If you see any signs of water, look at the seams between the basement door and the concrete foundation. If the caulk in the seam has been damaged or deteriorated, you'll need to apply a fresh bead of caulk to solve that problem. Now, even without leaks, some moisture is natural in a space that's below grade, so it's important to open the door frequently during uh, you know some really nice weather to circulate some fresh air and just make sure everything dries out in that area. Now at the top of each door there's a U-shaped flange called the header channel. This moves water um, from the opening like a gutter and just like the gutter on your roof it tends to fill up with debris from time to time. So to avoid an overflow or leakage clean out the header channel periodically. All moving parts require some lubrication so a few sprays of something like a multi-purpose um, lubricant on the hinges and a slide bolt locking mechanism will keep the doors swinging a lot more freely. Now these tips are brought to you by Bilco, the leader in basement access products. And you can find out a lot more on how to get more out of your basement by visiting Bilco.com. Had a lot of calls come in on the hotline. Let's, let's uh, take one right now from Ralph. Hi, I was hoping to get some advice uh, on a little backyard project that I've got uh, just leveling the ground for an above ground pool. I've got a little bit of a slope, and um, it's kind of concerning me the possibility of a cave in, whatnot. Uh, just need some some general advice on the right way to do this. Okay. Well, Ralph, what I would suggest to get a four foot level and then a really good straight two by four that would be uh, the same length as the width of the um, 
the, the pool and then use it. Um, you can really tape the four foot level on top of that two by four and just use it to really level the existing ground. You'll probably want to remove any grass or anything and take your shovel and your rake and get that nice and level. But then go buy some crushed stone. You can buy it in bags very inexpensively at Home Depot and just sprinkle that all throughout there. I, I would try to put maybe a couple inches there, then use a hand tamp and just tamp it down to compact all of that crushed stone. And then again, you continue to use your 2 by 4 with your level uh, tape to it to make sure it's nice and level because uh, like my buddy Joe Truini said, you hate to have one side of the pool deeper than the other <laughs> side of the pool by having it unlevel and it just won't hold up as well. But uh, Ralph, that should take care of that. Just a little bit of a sweat equity out there and you'll be able to have that pool uh, all summer long. Hey, want to remind you of that special new section that we have on todayshomeowner.com. It's all about metal roofing. You can find it at todayshomeowner.com slash metal roofing. It's brought to you by our friends at the Metal Roofing Alliance. You'll find all kind of great information and a little inspiration if you're considering a metal roof for your home. They're so popular these days, but they're also a little misunderstood in terms of uh, how you can do it, what they look like. You'll be amazed at some of the metal roofing that's available, and you can can see it right now at todayshomeowner.com slash metal roofing. Let's go to another one here. Thomas writes in, I am constantly getting junk mail from uh, companies offering to clean and service my HVAC ducts. I have a feeling um, that this is just nonsense and, you know, and just a way for a technician to find something that might be wrong. What do you think? Another kind of controversial subject that we've dealt with quite a bit and um, not all people that send things in the mail to you soliciting business are bad. We don't want to give that impression at all. But there there has been, over the last 10 or 15 years, a real push for people to sell this service of cleaning ductwork. And Joe, you and I have talked about it a number of times. There we is have, yeah. there is value to that if it is necessary. But if someone comes in and uses scare tactics that, oh, this is terrible. Oh, we're going to have to replace it. I might be able to right. save it if I clean it. You don't want that type of approach. But what do you think overall industry opinion on something about cleaning ductwork is most most hvac experts say that there's no reason to should not ever be a reason to clean the ducts because first of all you're treating the cause not the symptom right so you want to cr- stop the dust from collecting now if there's a huge buildup of dust or there's bacteria or something like that you might have to clean it but the way these are cleaned is they run a vacuum through it but they only run a vacuum through part of the system because you can't reach it all um, you know, ducks that are in the wall mm-hmm. that they just can't get to. So um, they the number one thing you should do and they recommend is just vacuum. Vacuum your home at least once a week, if not more often. And what you're doing is you're capturing that dust that's not getting blown through your system and maybe getting past the filter. And of course, we talk all the time about buy the very best filter you can, change it regularly. And if you do all those things, if you vacuum regularly and change the filter, then you shouldn't have a problem with dust in the duct work in the first place. There you go. Joe Truini, straight to the fact that you don't necessarily need to do that. And uh, so maybe just take that junk mail, throw it away. Don't worry about it, but change that filter on a regular basis. Time for our best new product segment brought to you by The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Now, if you watch my television show, you may have seen us use a battery-powered garden sprayer. Boy, it's a lot easier than the old pump-up style sprayer. I've basically thrown my old sprayer away because, you know, it just makes it so much easier. And now Ryobi has taken that step, uh, that idea, a little, little further along with a new electrostatic sprayer. This new unit was developed to help people disinfect their homes and small businesses is more effectively, but it's also great for applying cleaning solutions, herbicide, pesticides, and other lawn and garden products. The sprayer offers precise spray patterns from 2 to 10 feet, but the electrostatic component is what makes it so special. As the mist of liquid leaves the sprayer, the particles are electrostatically charged so that they're attracted to even surfaces that aren't in the direct path of the stream. Now, that delivers much better coverage in hard-to-reach places and reduces the 
the time required to do any project that you're doing, maybe as much as 50%. And of course, it's powered by the same 18-volt battery you already have in your garage with, that you use for all of your Ryobi OnePlus tools. So if you're interested in this Ryobi electrostatic sprayer, you can check it out at homedepot.com. Have you tried one of those cordless sprayers out before, uh, Joe? I have not, but I heard you talk about them now for the last several years, so I'm going to have to get one, and I'm going to get this new one. I want to give you a little tip here about some easy flower bed borders. If your lawn is healthy, it's going to grow not just up, but often out as well. That's great when it covers those those thin spots you might have in the yard, but it's not funny when it begins taking over your flower beds. That's why there's a lot of pricey flower bed border products out there. And, you know, the challenge is finding something that's flexible. You want it to be durable. It needs to be effective. And we're all watching our money, so it needs to be economical as well. You know, one of the solutions I discovered is using recycled paver blocks. You know, I had a stack left over from a, a, a pathway project that I did, and you know, I was able to you know use those without them just sitting there. But uh, if you don't have any around the house, you can usually find them secondhand, you know, online um, for just a few cents on the dollar. You can keep an eye out for those, and you simply just dig a shallow trench around the bed, about half the depth of the paver, set the blocks, uh, you know, on edge, then pack the dirt back in on either side to hold the pavers in position and you can make straight lines or curves depending on the variety of the pavers you can create some pretty interesting patterns as well now this tip brought to you by our friends at xmark the official mowers of the backyard life and for more great ideas and inspiration for your outdoors check out xmark.com backyard we've been producing a lot of videos for them of some pretty innovative things that you can do outside your yard and of course xmark mowers are well known for their versatility and the ability to really cut a yard like a pro mows a yard and uh and joe this is this is it's getting to be grass mowing season right That's now right. it's kind of just sitting there but before we know it we'll turn our backs and we're having to cut the grass every week or so yeah in fact um this is a great idea of using the the uh, pavers as a border in fact i shot a simple solution last time i was down in mobile visiting danny which will be airing on the tv show pretty soon where we show cutting a little trench and it not only keeps the grass from encroaching so easily into your flower bed, but it does create a nice line where you can mow against, which makes it a lot easier. So you're not riding your mower half on the grass, yeah. half in the garden bed or whatever. So yeah, I thought that was a great idea and we shot a simple solution of it. I'd encourage you, if you'd like to leave us a message on our Today's Homeowner Hotline, you can easily do that by just picking up the phone, 800 946 4420, and it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, your opportunity to ask us any question, comment, or uh, just like Dennis did here, offer any tip that has worked well for you. Then that way we can share it with our community all over. Hey, great morning, Danny, Joe. Yeah, just a question. Uh, my porch, it seems like it, it's, uh, it's a concrete porch, and it's uh, uh, turning out to be an annual project to paint it. And I'm just wondering uh, how I could etch it or strip it down uh, and basically start all over. All right. That's one of those things that's, boy, when you paint concrete, you're kind of, you're kind of obligated. I mean, it might look good for a little while, but we really don't recommend it because it gets, it makes it so slick when anytime there's any moisture around. And um, like you're finding out here, you're having to, to paint it on a regular basis. Um, I know Chelsea is working on an area of her home right now, uh, Joe, where it has uh, quite a um, number of coats of paint on it. Right. And uh, she's found um, a number of uh, chemical strippers that are pretty passive but still working very well and uh, I think you know on any um, you know flat area of a concrete you might be able to do some sanding on it to help it out but I think we uh, probably recommend some type of chemical stripper on this what do you think yeah chemical stripper or you can mechanically remove it meaning get a rent a grinder and just grind it off that'd be the quickest way um, and we're not talking about grinding off a lot of concrete we're just talking about the surface the right. paint itself mm -hmm. um, and this is exactly why we never recommend painting concrete porches. As Danny mentioned, it looks great the first week or month or so, um, but it starts to wear pretty quickly where you're walking. And then concrete is always full of moisture. And if moisture starts um, migrating up through it, it's going to blister off that paint. And then you have a real mess. So if you want to change the color, stain it. 
there are concrete stains that are like semi-transparent. They soak right in. And if it they fade or if they wear off, you can just clean the surface and go right over with more stain. There's no scraping or grinding or sanding or anything like that. Well, I'll I tell you what, I was very impressed with the coating that I put on um, my garage floor at my house because I, I wanted something to make it look good. And I, I was right. going to just stain it, but I used some of the Deitch coatings. Oh, yeah. That's another there. option, right? A lot of different types of finishes that are available there. And... Uh, Man, it just holds up so well, and because of the texture that it has, you have a special roller that comes with the kit. It creates a bit of texture on it, so it's a, a you know anti skid, so you're not right. you know slipping or anything. Because you know you even a garage that's um, closed up well and so forth, you still have your air conditioning um, vapor, you know um, water dripping off of your car, and maybe your tires are wet when they come in, so you still have right. a, you know a good chance of uh, falling down in there. But not on this one; it has a really nice texture and it appears to be holding up extremely well. So that's another option, and and that's a Deitch D A I C H coatings. Dot com. I'm uh, pretty impressed with the, everything there. And they just came out with a brand new uh, terrazzo type finish. It's oh, right. yet, yet yeah. um, another finish for inside or out that uh, really looks cool. And you can apply it to the steps too. I'm assuming yeah. this porch uh-huh. probably has concrete steps going up to it. So yeah, you can apply it to that as well. Make those look better and be slip resistant. We're all ready for spring. Now's the time to get ready for spring projects with help from the Home Depot. Install a brand new faucet, lay down fresh new flooring, roll on a bright new coat of paint. Need to figure square footage or paint coverage? Our project calculators will do the math. Do it all from our app and get delivery right to your door. Download our mobile app to get started. Bring on spring with innovative help from the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Now, while you're there at today's home auto, you may want to click on that simple solution button, sit back and relax and watch uh, over 500 simple solutions. It'll take you a little time, but right, little time. Now, but right now, Joe has a fresh one for us. Go ahead, Joe. All right, Danny, if you want to keep mosquitoes from ruining your backyard summer gatherings, but you don't want to spray pesticides all over the place, try this. This is how to make a non-toxic mosquito repellent. Into an empty glass jar, add three sprigs of fresh rosemary, then fill the jar about three quarters full with water. And next, add 10 to 12 drops of lemon, excuse me, lemon eucalyptus oil, Hmm. and then two or three slices of fresh lemon and fresh lime. Then just top off the mixture with um, a small tea candle. So you just take a little tea candle, you set it on top, Mm -hmm. it'll float right on top, light the candle. Hmm. So between the herbs and the citrus and the candle... If you just set this out on a table or on your deck, wherever, um, and it'll keep the mosquitoes away. And you can you can reuse it for probably, you know, you can keep it maybe after a week, you want to dump it out and, and replenish mm-hmm. it, you know, and reuse the, the the candle. But that's all you need to do. If you put out a couple of these, first, it really looks kind of cool. I, I was going to say, um, you get the right type of glass yeah. there that, uh, or vase or whatever, it'd probably kind of be attractive there. Yeah. In fact, if you go to Simple Solutions, today's homeowner.com slash Simple Solutions, you'll see a video that just posted. And I, I used a uh, large, uh, what do you call it, like a canning jar, one of those ball canning jars. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And it does, it looks great, you know, because it's clear and you see all this herbs and the lemons and lime. So try it. And, and uh, it, it really does work. Oh, that sounds great. That's another good, simple solution for something. And, and boy, what good timing and everything. I, uh, I We were out, uh, my wife and I were riding bikes the other morning, and, and uh, boy, the mosquitoes were just uh, just biting her back. And, uh, you know, really? I, I drove up beside her and slapped her on the back and everything. <laughs> she she didn't care for that too much. And she, <laughs> then she ran into a, a donkey, and, and, and she went off in the ditch. No, I'm kidding about that. We always kid about all these all these. Danny horses. often sees donkeys on his Man, morning bike ride. I tell you. And they look at me with such an evil stare. I don't know why. Really? Because, I guess because I'm always laughing at them because we talk about them. So I <laughs> see when I laugh at them, they don't think it's funny that they're stuck out there in the field eating grass. But anyway, I think it's should kind stop of, and bring them. A, I don't know what donkeys eat. Bring them yeah. an apple or something. I, mean, I need to do befriend, that. Huh? Befriend the donkey. Now it's time for our podcast question of the week, and you can send us one anytime by going to todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. This comes from Jeff in Virginia. Hi, Danny and Joe. I have a 23-year-old exterior cedar lap siding on my home. Three sides are okay. The south side is heavy sun, the solid stain will not stay. Now, in the past, I've tried scraping oil-based primer, then stain with a brush, and it just doesn't seem to really 
really hold up. Within two years, the stain will start to bubble and peel. Uh, I do not think I have a water problem behind the cedar. However, at 23 years old, the cedar looks more dried out on the south side of my home. Any ideas? Huh. Well, you know, that, that uh, wh- whichever exposure, you know, maybe the other sides of the house, Joe, has, uh, you know, more um, trees or things blocking it and, you know, the direction of the sun, you know, has a big difference on that. But it seem, seems a bit odd that they're talking about it bubbling and peeling because that would certainly seem to indicate a moisture issue. Uh, what do you think on that? Yeah, well, he said, you know, the cedar looks like it's more dried out on the south side of the mm-hmm. house. And there's good reason for that. It is. Mm-hmm. I live in a house. I have 25-year-old cedar clapboards on my house and the south side is more dried out and they have had to replace some boards that were so dried they buckled and pulled right off the side of the huh. building huh. yes because uh, you know so i just cut them out and replaced them but um and that's well first of all he used a solid color stain which i would not have recommended i used um a semi-transparent mm-hmm. and for those who aren't aware the only difference is a solid color stain has more color in it which means it has more pigment in it so it's closer to a paint than a semi-transparent stain, which is less like a paint because there's very little pigment. But in any case, but when you put pigment on it, it's the pigment that blisters. And Jeff doesn't mention whether he did this or not. I did it on our home. I I back primed every single piece of siding mm-hmm. before it got installed, meaning I stained the back of it. And that helps prevent moisture from passing through and it makes a finished lot look a lot last a lot longer. So I mean there's not much you can do about that. He's not gonna pull the siding off and and you know back prime it. So um and it's be be really hard to get rid of that solid color stain. Um, so he's just going to have to power wash it if he can, you know, do whatever he can to get, get the blistered stain off. But that's the reason. And he can't apply it too thickly either. It's not like paint. If you apply it too thickly, this is exactly what's going to happen. Um, unfortunately, um, there's not much he can do except clean it really well, scrape off the blistered part and, probably have to go back with more solid color stain and probably a little bit of, of feather sanding there with a disc sander yeah he might have to yeah you got to be really really careful make sure you wear that um the eye protection on that and, and a dust mask but you really can kind of you know get in a good position in any of those areas clean as much as you can off of there because if por- portions of it are bubbling now chances are other areas will bu- bubble later and release that paint no matter what you put on there right but um, and, and again, get, get the best quality stain you can afford that's going to help more than anything else. But uh, that's a tough one, but you just have to maybe paint that area or stain that side of the house right. maybe you know more often than you paint yeah. the other. So uh, I, think it, I think you can get past it, Jeff, and we appreciate your email to us to include it on this podcast. If you'd like to send us one, all you have to do is go to todayshomeowner.com slash podcast and we certainly appreciate each and every week all the wonderful reviews we're getting more and more people are listening to the today's homeowner podcast each and every week and for that joe and i say we really appreciate it i'm danny lippard along with my buddy joe truini thanks for listening to this today's homeowner podcast